most impressive performance Burgess recalls his father giving was for Fritz Lang's silent classic, Metropolis. The movie's images of a cowed proletariat, oppressive architecture, and tyrannical machines marked the 10-year-old Burgess's imagination indelibly. This still strikes me as being the best image of the future I've yet seen in film. Not all authors strive to write speculative fiction about the future, but you've done it several times. Was it Metropolis that set you ticking? I think it did. I, I think that uh, the image of the future that it presents, although it was obviously all cut-out stuff, you know, they weren't, they weren't real New York skyscrapers. It was a, a special... It was a maquette, you know. It was a, it was a built-up city. It was obvious. Uh, this uh, really... You're quite right. It didn't plant in me a desire to eventually to use words to um, depict not the present, not the past, but this unimaginable future. I think um, the British have been rather good at that in a curious way. I had uh, an attempt at doing that about 25 years ago when I wrote a novel called A Clockwork Orange. Uh, they tell me this was prophetic, but I don't think so. I don't think one can prophesy any more than Orwell could. But uh, the future is a force. It does exist for the novelist. There's no doubt at all about that. A Clockwork Orange has earned Burgess a measure of fame that irritates him. He says it's not his favorite book in the first place, and that Stanley Kubrick's movie misrepresented the spirit of it. The book is about a young man whose principal interests are Beethoven and ultraviolence, but it's also an optimistic book, concluding that teenage violence is just a passing phase. Kubrick's movie, meanwhile, was long on violence and short on philosophy. Uh, I saw it, uh, I was impressed by it. I thought it was rather boring in places, uh, as Kubrick is boring. You know, Kubrick is a boring, let's be honest, a boring but clever director. Uh, I felt that uh, Kubrick had not understood what the book was about. The book is really about uh, a very Catholic, a very Catholic theme, the importance of free will. We must have good, we must have evil, and we must have the power of choice. Uh, once the power of choice is taken away, then we cease to be human beings. That's all the story was about. Lord, have It was here, at the Church of English Martyrs, that Burgess received his early Catholic education. He says he discovered that Catholicism had chiefly to do with eternal punishment for trivial offenses. At seven, he was terrified by the idea of digesting the body and blood of Christ. At ten, he wondered if God really would condemn a boy to hell for the act of picking his nose. By his teens, confession was merely something he performed between sins. Today, Burgess describes himself as a lapsed Catholic, although he's never been able to escape the awesome visions of damnation. His lifelong obsession with Catholic doctrine has made him, alongside Evelyn Waugh, Graham Greene, and especially James Joyce, one of the prominent Catholic authors of our age. I suppose I was fairly highly sexed as a youth, and uh, sought sexual experience early, or had it thrust upon me. Then came the horrible business of having to confess it. Having to go to a priest and say, uh, Father, I've uh, done something terribly wrong. What was it, my son? Well, I, 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 I slept with a girl, Father. What? You did what? <laughs> and so it went on. And yet, uh, having confessed the sin and having received absolution, I will never do it again. You knew damn well you would do it again. Uh, this conflict between the God of one's groin, if you like, and the, and the God up there was uh, always a pretty persistent one. Of course, it still goes on to some extent. Everything that uh, Burgess writes is shot through and through with his uh, lifelong love-hate relationship with the Catholic Church. Robertson Davies and Anthony Burgess have long been mutual admirers. Davies reviewed Little Wilson and Big God for the New York Times book review. He is an extremely determined Catholic, but he has the mind of a Protestant. He doesn't want to submit to authority. Uh, he wants to have the, uh, the Protestant freedom to relate to God as he himself sees best. The body of Christ. Burgess's teenage resistance to Catholic doctrine prompted his principal to say, it's a sad business, a matter of little Wilson and big God. But John Anthony Burgess Wilson became an agnostic and now calls himself a manichae, one who believes that the wrong god, a malicious one, is temporarily ruling. When I was a boy, we were brought up on hell. Uh, as I get older now, I approach death. I can't help that. I mean, it's something that's going to happen. And uh, I feel that hell may be a reality. It, 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 however clever, however intellectual we are, however rationalist we are, you can't get away from the fact that there may be a hell. When the Jesuits say, you know, give me a child at the age of four or five and I've got him for life, there's a lot of truth in that. 
my background, my thinking, my sensibility is totally Catholic, even though I don't really believe. Burgess's nostalgia is for pre-war Britain. Manchester's industry made it a target for the Luftwaffe during World War II. Today, it's a battered emblem of Britain's depressed economy. The second half of Burgess's book leaves England behind almost completely and reveals his increasing disaffection with the British way of life. I think the real reason why I left England in uh, 1968, which is only 20 years ago, was because uh, England doesn't like its writers very much. England is not an easy country to write in. Uh, it's always regarded as a kind of uh, profession of uh, a degraded kind. You're not really making anything. Uh, whereas in uh, continental countries like France and Italy, it's accepted. It's a job like anything else. They call you maestro or maître. You feel uh, a bit of a lift at uh, doing a job which is uh, regarded as of some value. Has your work changed the world? Have you ever intended it? Does novel writing have the power? I don't think that uh, the, the writing of a novel is necessarily all that important a thing to do. It's not like founding a new religion or indeed inventing a thing like the miniskirt or uh, uh, producing a new kind of music like uh, the rock uh, or pop specialists. Uh, but I do think that uh, Say, in the 19th century, a writer like Dickens did have a, a quite perceptible influence on the way people thought, the way people, the way people behaved. He had an ethical influence. Whether we're having an influence now, I don't know. All I can say is that we're trying to keep the language alive. We're trying to show that the language is not merely a political medium or even, indeed, a medium, you know, for the arcane use of poets. It is a means of showing new phases of thought, new ways of feeling. I think in that sense, it's, um, in writing novels is probably a job worth doing. Burgess only sits down to the matter of novel writing at the very end of Little Wilson and Big God. He writes that at the age of 38, a doctor told him he had a brain tumor and only one year left to live. He began to write in earnest. For The Journal, I'm Daniel Richler. That profile of Anthony Burgess was produced by Alan Mendelssohn.